So I'm really excited to talk to you guys because you really position yourselves as a, a forefront of AI data centers. So let's start with Norway. Norway seems to be a great location for high compute power sites. Um, is it mostly because of the environmental factors, the location? What makes it the ideal site for a data center? A high compute data center needs to cool down the servers. And Norway is a really cool place. So the average temperature is uh, some 5.5 degrees mm -hmm. during the year. So basically we can do free cooling nine months out of the year. So the, that's try the PoE down um, and saves just a lot of money. And also uh, uh, the grid, the power grid we have is uh, really stable throughout Norway. So basically for the, in the area that we have our data center, I think they have three downtime in 20 years. Okay, and a statement that I read on your site, I think your CEO um, said, is that your goal is to operate our facilities at 100% renewable energy, yes. which is a welcome statement in our industry. Um, with the newly launched uh, Norway Oslo site, what have you done to meet this goal? In Norway, uh, we have 80, about 89% of the power that we're using are almost all of the power that we're using are renewable or I can probably say that uh, for certainty in our data center because we are have three local hydro power plants connected close to us. The closest one is 800 meters from our data center. Wow. So all our power basically comes for, from those three power plants mm -hmm. because power takes the shortest way, mm -hmm. shortest route. Uh, on top of that we have of course our mother company Aquila Group is one of the biggest companies in, in Norway regarding renewable power. And uh, for every megawatt hour that our data center is using, so megawatt hour into the grid of renewable power. So what innovative solutions or technologies are being implemented um, to reduce the environmental impact? What we're doing now is that uh, we are connecting to the uh, local, heat, uh, the local uh, heat exchange grid. Uh, we are then reusing our excess heat from our data center. So we are uh, working with the uh, local grid owner, the utility company. So they will put in place uh, all the infrastructure and then give our excess heat to other companies to heat up their offices or drying things. So that's a good, really good solution. It's basically dri driven our sustainability demands. So mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. Are there any challenges and considerations um, in implementing these new sustainable technologies? Yes, it is. Uh, it costs a lot of money, of course. And uh, what we're seeing now is a shift because if you talked with customers five, six years ago, they were not willing to take the extra cost to be sustainable. But now we see at the, a shift there. So I, I don't want to call it a premium service, but uh, it's, uh, our customer needs to be sustainable. So they are willing to pay a small premium on top of what they normally did five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, very mm. interesting. Um, are you seeing it across all of your customers or is it specifically hyperscalers? No, all, all, all of, of our them? customers, yes. And also the demands also that we use uh, geos. Mm -hmm. So that's also Geothermal. Um, no, geo is a, uh, when you buy power, you, you need to be, uh, be able to know where your power are from. So uh, okay. when you do a PPA, mm -hmm. You can also buy uh, geos that tells you exactly where the power are from. Okay. Come from. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very interesting. I mean, it's really refreshing and wonderful to see our industry moving in this mm -hmm. direction. That actually the customers are the ones that are demanding it, because of course that's what's going to dictate yeah. change. Um, are you guys using liquid cooling? Yes, we are. Um, so, has there been any concerns about liquid cooling from customers? Because I remember last year, I. We were very much talking about liquid cooling. There was mm -hmm. a lot of concerns from customers. Oh, immersion cooling, I'm not so sure. But now it just seems to be everyone's like, yes, go, go, go. Yeah, but we, we're not, we, we can do immersion cooling, but when we say cooling, uh, we are doing a closed water loop cooling. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have a system, uh, infrastructure, you know, et cetera. And then from that piping for the closed loop, you can either do rear door heat exchanger, you can do direct to the ship or immersive. So you can basically uh, do all three of them. It's just different connection to the pipes. Yeah. Okay, so something that is also becoming a concern um, with the expansion of data centers, there's a lot of remote sites that don't have sustainable power mm -hmm. um, or are not able to connect directly to you know, some sort of renewable source. Um, 
do you have any um, suggestions or any tips or how we could still bring in sustainability initiatives to such remote sites? What, when we do site selection, we always have a long list of questions that we go through. And we don't choose the size that doesn't fit all the criteria. <laughs> because uh, we are looking at sustainability, can we reuse the heat, are there any local initiative that we can uh, team up with. So we will not choose a site where we're not able to do this kind of things. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay, so governments need to sort of start offering, I think, renewable, more renewable energy sources yes. for us. Yes. Um, okay, I guess final question is, what excites you the most about the industry or Norway? There's a shift right now in the data center industry. So it used to be like going this way, now it's going <laughs> now straight it's up. Like, no, we straight don't up. <laughs> and it's a huge shift. I've never seen, I've been in the data center industry since uh, 99. Uh, the way that the market is acting right now, never seen it before. So it's, uh, okay. it's a good situation to be in uh, from a data center operator standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine. <laughs> um, do you see, just a random question, but do you, I mean, as you mentioned, it's, it's unprecedented, the growth, and mm. we just don't know where it's no. gonna where it's gonna go. Um, do you think that there's gonna be a massive technological shift? Because we can't surely keep growing at this rate. There will be no space left. Or no, how can we put it all in data centers? And you see quantum computing with the smaller chips. Mm. And do you think that there's gonna be more evolutions in the technology in that sense, making things easier to store on smaller pieces? That's what you're seeing now, because normally 10, 15 years ago, they, uh, our customers deployed 2,000 racks. And then they had this shift uh, five, six years ago. Then the 2,000 racks came down to 200 racks. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing an even other change from going from 200 racks down to 50 racks. That same amount of data, yeah. even more data. Yes. Wow. And now it's even getting smaller. Mm -hmm. It depends on what kind of power is available at the site because right now the power is the problem, not the space. So we, you need more power. So we, we need to build out more renewable power uh, and uh, we need to have, and faster, because that's the problem right now. Mm -hmm. Do you use AQ Compute work with local governments and yes. initiatives to try and get this um, up? Uh, we work with the uh, uh, local grid owner, the local utility. We work with the regional TSO and the national TSOs. Mm -hmm. So we work all the way, and also we work with the uh, governments. Is it and is it just uh, the reason it's slow to adopt and kind of increase power? Is there just understanding how the data centers work, or is it the resources, or what is really preventing them from accelerating? They don't know uh, what mm -hmm. the data centers are. No one knows. Mm -hmm. This is a small community, and if you ask anyone in the street that they really don't know what the data center is. It's true. I mean, yeah. I tried to explain it to my mother the other day mm. and she kind of like started falling asleep. Well, okay, no, no, it's very important. We're in a very important industry. <laughs> but we, we are working actively with the, 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 the newspapers, the press, and trying to, I will not say educate, but try to, to inform people what data centers are and why everyone needs data centers. Mm -hmm. Because if we hadn't had data centers, nothing would work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah.